everyone welcome to episode 20 of show me how it's done i'm so excited today to show you this adorable card using our whale done bundle so this bundle probably the highlight that you've noticed is the little whale because we have a gorgeous and adorable punch that complements the whale and you can make little water spouts and the tummy features all on the whale However, some of the features of the set that I think get overlooked are this little jellyfish and the turtle and the seahorse. So today I wanted my project to feature one of those characters. It's completely up to you which one you end up cutting out because unfortunately we don't have dies for these little guys. You just have to stamp them on a piece of paper and cut them out however you choose. So. Let's get going today on our project. The first thing that you're going to need is a card base. So I have cut this at four and one quarter by 11 inches, and I put a score mark right in the middle at five and a half. So when I fold this over, I'm going to take my bone folder and just give it a nice crisp line so that it is ready for us. To play with. We don't need this one at the moment. We're going to work on the card front. So this measures, it's also a piece of crushed curry. It measures four inches by five and one quarter and I have embossed it with seabed 3D embossing folder. Unfortunately this guy is not carrying over to our next catalog. So if you want it, it complements both the whale done suite and the friends are like seashells bundle and it's also on sale you get a buck or two off from it right now so make sure to grab that before may 3rd while supplies last so to decorate we are going to punch out some circles so with our layering circles dies which unfortunately are retiring too um, but grab them because honestly I use these all the time. So if you don't own them, make sure to grab them and the stitch shapes. I'm going to grab the DSP that coordinates with this series. So DSP is our designer series paper and I ended up making a bunch of cards with this paper. So I had kind of a strip of scraps, which is where the idea for this card came from because I literally just sat here with my circle dies and punched out all those extra pieces that I thought, hey, these still are pretty and they have lots of life, so let's make use of them. Okay, so you can choose any from your collection that you want. Maybe I'll just start adding a few to my set here. And it's kind of fun when they look different and just pop out of your card. I don't really like how this one blends. So let's swap that out. Give me some waves. Okay, so I'm gonna try it with this set. And as you can see, I've chosen different ones on the left here. So these three, when I put adhesive on the back, I'm gonna end up putting one at the top, one at the bottom, and one straight over top, all using designer series paper. Okay, so actually, maybe we'll make our little whales the feature. Yeah, they're kind of cute. Okay, so let's put some tape or seal or whatever you have on hand on the back here. And then we'll be good to go. Once again, one goes at the top, closer to the left-hand side. One goes on the bottom. And one goes in the middle. Okay. So we're going to now get our little tag ready. Then I'm going to show you how to do a really fun rouged ribbon feature before we attach that tag. So I have chosen the smallest 
of my stitched rectangles and I'm going to grab that coral stamp and my soft seafoam ink and just add a little backdrop to my tag. So I'm just going to stamp three of them right across the back and it's going to be very subtle. You'll barely be able to see it, but when you look up close, you can see that there are in fact some cute little corals back there instead of just a white tag. And then with your pretty peacock ink, we're going to add our sentiment. So the one that I chose was the, my love for you is greater or is bigger than the ocean. So I ended up putting this down near the bottom of the rectangle because I wanted a little bit of space in the top for my jellyfish to sit on. If you end up putting it in the middle of the tag, that's totally fine as well, okay? So don't stress about that. But we're going to get this ready to attach. So on the back, we're putting dimensionals on the top, okay? So I'm gonna flip this over like so. We're only putting dimensionals on the top section because the ribbon is really thick already. So we don't need dimensionals here. We only need them on the top of the tag. So on the bottom, what I end up putting is just a strip of tape. You can also put seal and then that's ready for you to go. My little jellyfish, I stamped with Calypso Coral and I just cut him out. So on his head, I'm going to put one little dimensional and then just for his body to stick to the tags, I'm going to put a little strip of tape. Okay, so that's ready to go. But first we have this ribbon technique that I wanted to show you guys, it's great. So take some double-sided tape and wherever you want your line for the ribbon is where we're going to put this strip, okay? Like, so, and then just cut off the end. I chose to use the ribbon that accompanies our Good Morning Magnolia Suite. However, you're welcome to choose any sort of ribbon you want for this technique, okay? So on one end, you want this little nice diagonal cut, okay? So just grab your scissors and cut your end just so it's got a nice kind of triangle like so. So this end here is what we're starting with and I like to just leave my ribbon on the roll here. So I'm going to set this right on the edge of my adhesive right here, okay? So you have two choices. You can make beautiful uniform loops or we can do a little bit of messy ribbon work. So to make a loop, you're just, you've got kind of the slightest little bit stuck to your adhesive. You're gonna bend a little ribbon forward and then stick the back side of that loop onto your adhesive, okay? So you see I've left this loop free and then the back side of it has now stuck to my adhesive. So when I make another loop, make another pretty loop and then stick the back to the adhesive again okay so you can do this all the way across nice pretty loop and stuck to the back if you ever get to a point where you're like oh i've totally messed up i hate it just pull and you can start again okay um if you're somebody who's like i don't really want to do these nice uniform loops Let's get a little messy. You're just going to kind of haphazardly bend and pull your ribbons. You're not worrying about uniform loops beside each other. You're just gonna start kind of bringing some ribbon up and then attaching some ribbon down, okay? And you can see this looks a lot funkier than the nice uniform ribbons, but it will look great because as soon as we put this tag on the front, we'll flatten that a little bit and then you've got a really cool base layer of ribbon below. Okay, so we'll just finish this off in kind of the 
little funky way, and then you can see the difference. Now, when I get to the end, I don't want to cut my ribbon along the card stock. I'm instead going to give myself just a little extra ribbon like this, and we're going to tuck it behind the card. Okay, so when I do that, I'm just going to turn this over and put a piece of tape over top of that ribbon. This will help your ribbon not unravel and uh, I guess kind of wreck your card. So just tuck that piece in behind. Okay, like this. So to add our tag, we're now going to come in and take these dimensionals off and the backing. So keep in mind, you want to see most of this ribbon work, but we do need our tag to flatten some of those pieces too. So I'm going to just rest it against the very top edge of the ribbon. And you can see how it kind of just flattens the ribbon down onto the cardstock. My little jellyfish, I'm going to now attach. And he just kind of rests partially on the tag and partially up, floating into the ocean waters. Okay, so before we add my last little embellishment, we're going to put this on the front of the card. So turn it over and start adding some dimensionals. You will want quite a few because we've got a few things kind of pulling at the paper in your card, starting with the embossing folder and then ending with that ribbon line. So just make sure you've got some dimensionals all around the perimeter and even a couple in the center here. And with our card base, put that on top and attach. Now you're welcome to use a different color if you wanted this to kind of stand out a little bit more. But I liked the difference between an embossed background and one that's plain. I thought it still gave a really nice shadow feature. So the card is adorable right now, but I wanted to make it a little oceany. So I'm adding some bubbles using these little gems from our sunflower bundle. Okay. So these guys, I'm just going to attach with some Tombow liquid glue. If you're saying, hey, I don't love the idea of just attaching gems, you can grab the clear or epoxy dots and those would make adorable bubbles too. Even some rhinestones is great. But I'm just gonna put some dots of glue exactly where I want my bubbles to sit. And if you don't feel comfortable picking these up with your fingers, we have a great tool called a take your pick tool. And it has a nice putty end. So that would pick up these little guys for you just fine. So totally up to you. You'll notice as you're putting them on right now, that glue is very white and it doesn't really look the greatest to be honest, but don't worry, it will dry clear. So when you're done, with your project, wait like half an hour and it should be dry. And then you're good to go with little clear bubbles. I still wanted to show you how to do it. Okay, so lots of bubbles all over my card. You can see very clearly where I put them because you can see those white dots, but as I promised, they will dry and it'll be a nice clear look for your card for that bubble scene, okay? So to kind of give you a couple more ideas of what you could do, I was having so much fun with this project that I decided to use some other colors from the series, and I just chose colors that were kind of featured in some of the paper. So the first one that I featured was the Pretty Peacock, and I use different designer series paper for each of them. None of them really look the same. Sorry, get you to focus. There you go. 
So this is the pretty peacock background and it looks really gorgeous with that calypso coral little jellyfish on there. And then I decided I wanted some just jade, which was featured a lot in the greenery on the card and some of the seahorses. So exact same layout, but just a different background base. And last one is the Calypso Coral. That one shows up a lot in the jellyfish. There's some coral papers and a few fish. There you guys go. I hope you have a lot of fun recreating some of these cards and um, also just seeing the idea that once you have one standard layout, you can also recreate it in just a multitude of colors as well. So it gives you a nice array of colors and cards to give out without handing out the same card to every person. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's project. If you haven't yet liked this video and subscribed to my YouTube channel, that would be wonderful because I'm trying to build that following. I look forward to crafting with you guys again next week. Bye.